Loving Father of mercy and compassion, thank you for this opportunity for coming together that we may learn your word. We pray for your inspiration and power in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends all over the world. May the Lord truly be praised and be glorified for this opportunity. I want to welcome you all in a, in a very special way. Those who are joining us for the first time and those who have been with us before. May the Lord be praised for that. And today we want to focus on what is happening currently in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Primarily what is happening in America. La Sierra University Church. I affirm. I affirmed LGBT+. Plus. How will God deal with compromise? So we're looking at uh, how God is going to deal with compromise that is in the church today. How God will deal with his organization. We're actually looking at the behavior of the organization at the moment. I want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 7 from verse 19. The Bible says, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you know them. For you to know what somebody stands for, you see what they behave, how they behave. You see how they do things. You see, you hear how they talk. This is the only way you can actually tell what people stand for. And the Bible is saying, by their fruits you know them. Their fruits you know them. When you look at their fruits, they character of their fruit. In fact, the type of the fruit they bear, then you know them. Now we learn from the book Maranatha, page 158, paragraph 5, 4 says, the very last deception of Satan would to be to make of none effect the testimony of the Spirit of God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's Proverbs chapter 29, 18. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. The desire of the devil is to unsettle the confidence of God's people in the true testimony, in the word of God. He uses different means. He says he works ingeniously to ensure that we doubt the validity of the scriptures, to ensure that we doubt the spiritual prophecy. And when he has done that, then he will drive us into an open rebellion. It will be a downward march to perdition until destruction. The challenge that we have today is we are in the Laodicean congregation. And in the Laodicean congregation is the most dangerous state. And people are very divided. They don't seem to understand what they are doing. There is no seriousness. We want to be either in the world or in the church. And we want to be in the world and in the church. And we want to drive the two together. But the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, 24, No man can save two masters for he either... Either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot save God and Mormon. Truly, you cannot save two masters. You need to make a choice. Which one do you want to save? In the church today, we are saving two masters. In the church of Laodicea, two masters are saved. It seems as if we want the God of heaven. It seems as if we want the God of this world. And there is a competition between these two masters. This is the reason why in La Sierra University they can plan such a thing. Two masters are being saved at a time. But now, it says, uh, Christian Council, it says, Christ has brought before us two masters. God and the world and and has plainly presented the fact that it is simply impossible for us to save both. We need to make a choice. This is Christian Council, page 321. We need to make a choice. Are we of the world? Or are we of the God of heaven? Because the two are different. The two cannot be saved by both. It says, uh, if our interest in and love for this world, this world predominate, we shall not appreciate the things which above all others are worthy of our attention. The love of the world, we exclude the love of God and make our interest, our, our highest interest, subordinate to the worldly consideration. Thus God will not hold so exalted a place in our affections and devotions as to the things of the world. 
So we just need to make a choice, my brothers and sisters. That's why Joshua says to his people, choose ye this day. The message of Elijah that comes to the remnant church is how long hold he between two opinions? We just need to make a choice. Are we for the world or are we against the world? Because the two are different. The two are going different ways. We are told in Review and Herald, uh, August 25, 1910, between the world, the worldly men and the, and the one who is faithfully serving God, there is a great gulf fixed. There is a great gulf fixed between the culture of the world and the culture of God. There is a great gulf fixed between these two communities. You cannot afford to be in the world and in the church and then you try to drive the two together. Indeed, by doing that, you are despising the God of heaven completely. He says, upon the most momentous subjects, God and truth and eternity, their, their thoughts and sympathies and feelings are not in harmony. One class is ripening as wheat for the garner of God. The other is tears for the fires of destruction. How can there be unity of purpose or action between them? Remember the parable of the wheat and the tears. The two are growing together. The tares will be harvested for the burning, and the wheat will be harvested for the Ghana. And right now, this is what exactly is happening in Laodicean Church. The two are growing together. The interests of the two are becoming very visible. That's why today you find that you know those of the world they have got great sympathy to sin. They are very sympathetic to the LGBT. They seem to have loved the sin and the sinner together. My brothers and sisters, look at what it says. How can they be unity of purpose or action between them? Know ye not friendship of the, friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoso therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. For no man can save both. You can't save two masters at a time. But remember, the great controversy is being played in our minds today. Every day we are making a choice, either for God or the devil. And the objective of the, of the devil is to destroy the church of God. And the devil has planted his subjects within. That's why Matthew chapter 30, 13, in the parable of the wheat and the tears, Jesus says, let them grow together. Before he said that, he said, the enemy has done that. And those of the enemy, my brother and sister, they don't enjoy the gospel. They don't enjoy the truth. They would rather have the things of the enemy to be preached to them, and they are comfortable with that. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, This know also that in the last days, Perea's last time shall come. And these are the last days. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trace breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. You know, I was, uh, I was uh, before I come to that, let me actually go to verse 4. Traitors, hate, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They, are no, long, they no longer have natural affection. I was uh, listening to a presentation from um, the Ugandan president yesterday. He was talking about uh, this law. They have signed that uh, very harsh law about the LGBT. And he says, I have done my studies for a long time. I listened to him. I actually, this was my first time to listen to him for a very long time. I listened to him intently. I, and he said, I have done my studies for a very long time. And what they call an alternative lifestyle is not even an alternative lifestyle. And he was very categoric. Let them do it in their own country. As for us here, we will do our thing. We don't want their money. We cannot afford to subscribe to the worldly standards because of money. We cannot af afford to sell our morals because of money. Let them keep their morals. He had a serious point which I understood. Many of us today, we do things for the sake of money. 
Some of us, we have become so sympathetic with sin because of money. We don't see the sinfulness of sin anymore. We think of the benefit that we get when we sympathize with those in sin. Paul described the condition of the world in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, from verse 27. And likewise also the men living the natural use of men bend in their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves that recommends of the, their error, which was meet, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. Now, these are people that have rejected the truth. Paul is not addressing people who are in the world. He is addressing the condition that will exist in the world, but this condition will be in church. It's said to say, my brothers and sisters, the evil that is in the world is the same evil that you find in church today. There is no extreme because the wheat and the tares are growing together and the tares have come with all that is vile, filthy, disgusting, despicable. And they've brought it to the church and their desire is that the church may embrace it as we can see what is happening today in our universities. Now, verse 29, the Bible says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, conviciousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, whispers, backbiters, haters of good, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without nat understanding, cov covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know in the judgment of God that they which do such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. My brothers and sisters, the judgment has been set. The judgment is sitting. Names are rejected. Names are being accepted. And when our names come before God, decision will be made. We are told in verse 32 that who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worth of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Do we see the pleasure in them that do them? What should we do, my brothers and sisters, with ungodliness among us? When the world knows the truth, but we deny the power that can transform a sinner from a sinner to a righteous person, what should we do when we become so sympathetic with sin, especially the sin of LGBT? My brothers and sisters, I ask a question, have we arrived? But how will God resolve this problem? This is the most interesting thing. How will God resolve the problem of sin? How will God resolve the problem of LGBT in his church? Simple. But before we get to that, Let's actually look at what is happening to at La Sierra University Church. It says La Sierra University Church will hold the am affirmed LGBT plus graduation ceremony on the Sabbath, on the Lord's Day. This will happen. This is the flyer on the right side. There is the flyer, which is actually on their website. It says uh, on the 3rd of uh, June, 2023, Lavender graduation celebrating the LGBT plus Seventh Day Adventist class of 2023. So there will be a celebration of LGBT. This celebration will take place on the Sabbath school class. It will take place on Sabbath. They are not afraid to mention this. But now look at uh, the way how this reporter reported it in this paper. It says, Adventist education is in the midst of monumental changes. On, on the Sabbath, on Sabbath, uh, June 3rd, at uh, La Sierra University, we'll be celebrating a special graduation ceremony to honor LGBT students and to acknowledge their achievements and contribution to the university, even though the rest of the 2023 graduation class will not have their ceremony celebrated until Sunday. 18th of uh, Sunday, 18th of June 2023. This Sabbath service is a special ceremony to recognize LGBT plus students. There is a special celebration. This is to honor the LGBT students.
The universities recognize that it has got um, LGBT students and is recognized that we need to honor them. And this celebration is called Lavender Celebration. Lavender Celebration. Now the question is, what exactly is this? They've decided that at 6.30 p.m. Celebrating the LGBT plus Seventh Day Adventist class of 23. This will take place on the 3rd of June. But now somebody will ask a question, what exactly is lavender? What will be happening in this ceremony? Why have the university decided to do such a thing? What is the power behind? Look at this. Celebrating success and inclusion. The meaning of a lavender graduation. So it's a celebration of success and inclusion. And what exactly are we including? the LGBT community, that which God says is detestable, that which God says has no place. This is what we say we are going to celebrate. We need to recognize that these people are with us. These people are among us. Are we going to be preaching to them? Are we going to be teaching them? Are we going to be teaching them morals? Are we going to be directing them to Christ? No, we are going to appreciate who they are. In other words, we are going to normalize what they are doing. It says lavender, a lavender graduation is a special type of graduation ceremony that celebrates the achievements of LGBTQ plus students and recognize their unique contribution to their school and community. This meaningful event is often held at the end of the academic year and is designed to highlight the accomplishments of LGBTQ students and create a safe and inclusive environment for them to celebrate their success. Does that mean LGBT is now accepted at our university? Does that mean that the universities, our universities now, they have accepted the LGBT community and they appreciate what they are doing? What exactly are they, to, are they saying? It, say, it also serves as a reminder that every student should be celebrated and appreciated to their, to their hard work and dedication. Lavender graduation are a powerful way to show LGBTQ plus students that their identities are valued and respected. In other words, um, LGBT is valid. LGBT is respected. I'm not very much worried in what is happening in the world. But when this has come to church, and now we are celebrating it, what exactly are we saying? This thing called love and the celebration, it was created by Ronnie Sanlo, a Jewish lesbian keynote speaker in LGBT communities. It's conducted at several campuses. Therefore, it seems as if uh, the Adventists, they've decided that uh, we cannot go without it. Just like any other universities, let's have it as well. So this was the flyer which was sent by Paul Mali, chair of La Syria University Psychology Department. It was sent and sent the, it also sent the following uh, email, it says, I am affirmed LGBT plus graduation. To all the LSU community, the LA, the La Syria University Church Kinship Sabbath School is organizing a lavender graduation service for class of 2023 graduates. Any graduating student from our local community who identifies LGBT plus is welcome to participate. So they know them. They recognize them. They appreciate them. They've invited them. But what will God say? What is the position of God? What is the position of the church of God? My brothers and sisters, I'm not going to ask the position of the organization now. One thing that I've actually realized is, in our organization, there are those who have said yes. But in our organization, there are those who are still standing on the principles of God. And right now, these are tears. 
which are bringing this. Am I judging? No, I'm actually talking about people who are bringing the gospel which is ungodly and they are bringing it among the children of God. How can we say we are serving the same God when we decide to bless that which the God of heaven has cast? But now why on Sabbath? What exactly is happening? Why this celebration on an Adventist institution? You know, the paper has got an answer. It says Adventist institutions are, institutions are being targeted by a massive LGBT plus campaign and La Seria University is leading the way in LGBT plus affirmation. The message was that was public, publicized uh, to the entire LSU community is that the LGBT plus agenda is now being affirmed by school administration. These initiatives aim to normalize the LGBT plus lifestyle among youth. So, should we then appreciate when our children are going haywire? Are we saying the LGBT lifestyle is now acceptable among the children of God? You know, remember the story of Pastor Gunjavich. Uh, the union accepted him as a pastor. The conference accepted him as a pastor. Of course, the division or the, conf uh, the, the, the division or the general conference took a different stance altogether. They decided to be biblical. So this is what we see. What we have seen in Germany, we see it in America. Even though the Bible is very clear in the book, the book of Leviticus chapter 18, 22, that uh, you cannot sleep with mankind, it's an abomination. The Bible is very clear, but the leadership seem to have chosen a different way altogether. Now the question is, can they not see what they're doing is wrong? Has the Bible lost its power? Is the devil operating in the church? But have we arrived, my brothers and sisters, at the parting line? Have we arrived at the final shaking time? How will God deal with this challenging situation? Unless you have, if, if you don't understand how the church is, you fail to understand what is happening. But let me take you to the book of Revelation chapter 3 from verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, cold, nor hot. How thou wert cold or hot? So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The church of God is in his mouth. It's a judgment time. The church of God is neither cold nor hot. The church of God is the jack of all trades. The church of God is on the crossroads. In the world, we want to progress. In the church, we want to progress. And God is saying, this is the lukewarm state of the church. So that's why we see all this evil. But the church of God does not think that she doesn't know. She thinks she knows everything. That's why verse 17 says, Because thou say I'm rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. The church of God does not understand its state. The problem is within the church. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, the church is currently on the worst state. It's on the most dangerous state because it's a lukewarm state. But now the question is, how will God deal with it? Will God leave it like that? No. Now, when we look at the environment in the church or the people in the church today, they are well described in the, uh, in the Bible commentary on uh, page uh, 976 this is volume 7 says we are worse than infidels half-hearted christians are worse than infidels for their deceptive words are uncommittal position and uncommittal position lead many astray because uh, our words are very deceptive we affirm the lgbt we are not committed Therefore, we lead many people astray. People want to make a decision for the truth or against the truth, but they come to a point where they meet these half-hearted Christians in Laodicea. It's very hard. It says the infidel shows his colors. The lukewarm Christian deceives both parties. 
He is neither a good worldling nor a good Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. Yes, they are proper infiltrators. In the world, they say something. In the church, they say something. They appear in both. They demonstrate to the world that you can be both. Oh yes, that's how dangerous we are. We have decided to become neutral. We don't call sin by its rightful name anymore. We behave as if that which is evil is right. And inspiration said that's the most dangerous state, the laudation state. But today with God says, page 240, many, many have tried neutrality in a crisis, but they have failed in their purpose. No one can maintain a neutral ground. Those who endeavor to do this will fulfill Christ's words. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You can definitely not serve God and Mormon. Those who begin their Christian life by being half and half, whatever may be their intentions, will at last be found enlisted on the enemy's side. So my brothers and sisters, it's impossible for us to continue in the same way with God. It's impossible for us to continue in the church of God. Sooner or later, the church will vigorously be shaken by God. The problem is within. That's why last day events page, uh, page uh, 156 says, we have more to fear, far more to fear from within than from without. The hindrance to strength and success are far greater from the church itself than from the world. Unbelievers have the right to expect that those who profess to be keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will do more than any other class to promote and honor by their consistent lives. By their godly example and their active influence, the cause which they represent. However, the unbelievers are seeing a very different, different thing altogether. We don't take God at his word anymore. Sin is brewed in church. And the question is, have the giants started falling yet? What is happening to our universities? What is happening to Andrews University? What is happening to La Sierra University? What is happening to all these Adventist universities? We have highly esteemed them. But my brothers and sisters, the words of Martin Luther have been fulfilled today. Our, high, our theologians, which we have esteemed highly, have gone to the world. And Martin Luther says, Martin Luther writes thus of the university, I fear much that the universities will be, I fear much that the universities will be found to be the great gates leading down to hell unless they take diligent care to explain the Holy Scriptures and to engrave them in the hearts of the youth, I would not advise anyone to place his child where the Holy Scriptures are not regarded as the rule of life. Every institution where the word of God is not diligently studied must become, cor must become corrupt. Yes, quoted in the signs of the times, July 6, uh, 26, 1883. Could it be, my brothers and sisters, the devil is now honored in our universities? Could it, be the, could it be the university campuses have become the most dangerous places? I'm referring to the Adventist universities. The world universities are world universities. Now the question is, what will happen when the Bible is set aside? Can a school of theology set aside the Bible? The answer is yes. How useful is compromised theology to the gospel? It's terrible. It's toxic. No wonder why my brothers and sisters, many of our pastors went to the universities when they were lay people, they were very powerful in their preaching, and when they come there, they've been diluted, they've been destroyed. What is happening? It's the education they have received. 
the accreditation that we have desired in our universities, the desire to be recognized, has destroyed us. We have seek to affiliate ourselves with the, the, world, the, the, the education of the world. And to us, that's the standard. But unfortunately, this has destroyed us as a church. It's destroying us as the children of God. And Paul says to us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise and in their own craft. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. So the thoughts of the wise, they are vain. You know, we are given the example of Moses, who was educated in the universities of Egypt, but God decided to undo all that education. For 40 years, he was following the ship of Jethro. Conflict and Courage, page 83 says, it was not the teaching of the school of Egypt that enabled Moses to triumph over all his enemies, but an ever abiding faith, an unflinching faith, a faith that did not fail under the most trying circumstances Moses acted as seeing the invisible. So, what we get in the university sometimes, what we desire is the best education, does not help us spiritually, does not help us in terms of mission. It only works to destroy us. It reduces the gap between sin and righteousness, that we will not see the sinfulness of sin. You know, I wanted to be a pastor. I wanted to go to university to train as a, as a pastor. And I remember I sat down with one of my pastors. It was a long discussion. And he said to me, when you go there, that's when you realize what it is. You may actually lose your Christianity completely. And many people who have gone to the universities to train as pastors, they lost their spirituality. It is because the environment has been created in such a way that uh, the syllabus, the subjects being taught, most of them have nothing to do with Christ. It is because we have desired to affiliate ourselves with the world. We want the world standard. But that does not help mission. No wonder why God says, I'll train my own people that will finish the work. Yes, I've appreciated the training of God. It's much better than to be trained in the Babylonian, in, by, by in the Babylonian syllabus. Yet I want to preach the gospel of the God of heaven. This is a fact, my brothers and sisters, it's true. You can go and ask your pastor. He will tell you the same thing, that the syllabus being taught in our universities, most of it, it has nothing to do with the God of heaven. So there's men who are seeking efficiency for the exalted work of God by perfecting their education in the school of men who find that they have failed to, of learning the more important lessons which the Lord would teach them. By neglecting to submit themselves to the impressions of the Holy Spirit, they, by not living in obedience to all God's requirements, their spiritual efficacy has become weakened. Oh yes, because we thought that was education, but it's not. It has been designed by the enemy. There is a problem in our universities, my brothers and sisters. The problem is we have departed from the principles of God, and most of the teachers that train us in the universities, they don't even believe in the God of heaven. What do you expect when you are being taught by a Catholic? You are being taught by somebody who is drinking the wine of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17 and you expect that you can preach Revelation chapter 12. It's impossible. That's why, brothers and sisters, today our sermons have become so weak. It is because we don't believe in the truth anymore. But you know, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 28 says, Who can bring a clean thing out of unclean? Not one. Oh yes. How can you expect to get something clean from Babylon? Job 14 verse 4. Can we then expect the youth to develop a Christian character while their education is molded by the teaching of those who set a defiance, set defiance the principle of the law of God? The answer is no. 
That's Christian temperance, page 381. The answer is no, my brothers and sisters. The problem that we have is, our, is with our theologians. The problem that we have is with our teachers. The problem is that we have is our desire to affiliate ourselves with a system that is dying or the system that is drinking from the wine of Babylon. Therefore, there is a serious problem within our institutions. And we are told that many of the giants of the theologians will fall. For they have left the truth and they joined themselves. Most of them, they have, been, they have received their education from Catholic University. What do you expect from a Catholic professor? What do you really expect from somebody who has been educated at Oxford University to come and lead the Church of God as a theologian? My brothers and sisters, we are told that in these last days, last day events, page 178, many a star that we have admired for its brilliance will then go out into darkness. They will go into darkness. The people that we have admired mostly, why are they going into darkness? They are revealing their true colors. They have been leaning on that side. Now they are falling on that side. Men who he Men whom he has greatly honored will, in the closing scenes of this earth's history, pattern after ancient Israel, a departure from the great principle Christ had laid down in his teaching, a working out of human projects using the scripture to justify a wrong course of action under the perverse working of Lucifer who confirmed men in misunderstanding and the truth that they need to keep them from wrong practice will leak out from their soul like water from a leaky vessel. What is happening? Once upon a time, they were respected. But their true colors are very clear. Therefore, they go into darkness. What we see in the university today, my brothers and sisters, the great principles are being laid aside. Why are the great pr principles being laid aside? Because of the desire to be like the world. They are using the Bible today to justify LGBT, say it's, it's inclusivity. There is nothing about inclusivity in sin, my brothers and sisters. Sin is sin, that's all. What could be justification of lavender celebration at La Sierra University? What could be the justification of such an act except compromise? But now what exactly is happening in the Church of God? Can the church of God survive this ordeal? My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The church of God is not going to go anywhere. The church of God will remain. The shaking will be very vigorous as God deals with his church. Indeed, he has started dealing with this church. There are many congregations where God is mentioned, but when the congregation is totally and completely departed from God. For many are called, by few are chosen. And we are told in the last day events, page 180, the church may appear as if about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out, the chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless, it must take place. Are we surprised with what is happening in Germany? about LGBT? Are we surprised with what is happening in La Sierra about LGBT? Are we surprised about what is happening in Andros University about LGBT? No, these things are going to happen and these things ought to happen. And remember, the wheat and the tears are growing together. But we are told in our last day event that a storm is coming. And as the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. So many of the people who abandon their position and join the ranks with the enemy. But why would they do that? It is simply because the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. This is the National Sunday Law. The mark of the beast will be edged upon us. Those who have step by step yielded to the worldly demands and conformed to worldly customs will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be. 
rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threatenment, in prison, and death. The contest is between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. And we are told that in this time, God will be separated from the dross in church. So how is God going to deal with this subject? God is going to shake his church and he will separate the dross from base metal. And many of those people we have actually appreciated as if they are being led by God. We have appreciated as if they are under the counsel of God. We will only realize that they are best metal. Because at that juncture, gold will be separated from the dross in the church. And the church will be pure. And you know, Jesus concluded in his longest sermon. And this is how we are going to conclude today. He went to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. But there was another builder. And, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So there are two builders. And the best way to understand the strength of the house, you exert it to pressure. Flood tested the foundation. And even now, God will use persecution. In fact, he will use shaking to purify his church. He will allow persecution to come. He will allow false theories to come. And at the end, my brothers and sisters, the church of God will be purified by these delusions, by the persecution, by the straight testimony. And I want to end on this quotation. It says, Christ illustrated character building by a house built on a rock against which storms and tempests were powerless and the house built on the sand which was swept away. We are living in the perilous times amidst the changing scenes with the errors and false doctrines coming in that will test the faith of all and the house built on the rock cannot be shaken. But when storm and tempest come, the house built on the sand will fall and great will be the fall of it. These things are coming from the world. And as they are coming from the world, the house that is built on the word of God will not crumble. The children of God will not compromise. God will shake his church vigorously and he will expose all the wrongdoing. He will expose all the compromises. Blessed are we if we remain solid and grounded on the platform of the truth. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed are we if we can build our houses on the solid rock. That is Jesus Christ. Give us power, Lord, to comply with the truth of the word. To you, Lord, be the glory for great things you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, May the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition. We'll be focusing on prayer for the weekend. It will be prayer and fasting. So may the Lord truly bless you. Don't forget to share the message. Until then, God bless.